If the main characters of this sitcom felt like family to viewers, then these supporting characters were like in-laws. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best Friends recurring characters. I certainly see why the girls like coming here. Why? The sexy blonde behind the counter. For this list, we're taking a look at Friends characters outside of the main six cast members who made more than one appearance throughout the series. I'd say from the looks of it, our naked buddy is moving. Uh, ironically, most of the boxes seem to be labeled clothes. Number 10, Estelle Leonard. Joey lands a lot of lousy gigs, although it's not necessarily because he's a bad actor. Come on, you guys, it wasn't that bad. I was the lead. Estelle clearly isn't the best talent agent, with her only other client being a guy who eats paper. That being said, Estelle is loyal to Joey and even books him an audition on Days of Our Lives. Over the course of the show, Estelle can primarily be found chain-smoking behind her desk, speaking in a voice that's raspier than Joan Rivers, and wearing enough makeup to make Dolly Parton blush. Joey, have you ever seen me ecstatic? No. Oh. Well, here it is. While her screen time is rarely long, Estelle's sleazy demeanor and occasional incompetence never fail to get a laugh. Okay, doll, talk to you later. Yeah, you're gonna have to sleep with her. After 10 years of service, Estelle sadly passed away, but at least she got to bid Joey farewell. Sort of. Good luck with the career. You're gonna be huge. Thanks for everything, Estelle. Bye. Out of area, boy, I'll say. Number nine, Amy Green. Uh, is this the first time you're seeing Emma? Yeah, I, I think so. It's nice to meet you, Emma. <laughs> Phoebe. Oh. That's a funny noise. When we first meet Rachel Green, she can come off as spoiled, selfish, and insensitive. Of course, Rachel matures into a much more well-rounded person over the years. What if Rachel hadn't moved to New York and turned her life around, though? Well, you'd probably get someone a lot like her sisters. Where youngest sister Jill carries Rachel's spoiled tendencies, middle sister Amy takes the selfishness and insensitivity into overdrive. You are much cuter than that geeky guy she used to date. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> Appearing in two episodes, one of which won actress Christina Applegate an Emmy, Amy is lovable despite basically being an adult mean girl. Even when she's trying to better herself, Amy's idea of helping is getting a toddler's ears pierced. You pierced her ears? <laughs> Doesn't it make her nose look smaller? Still, Amy's irresponsible nature helps her find her true calling, baby stylist. It's almost as if people don't want to hear that their babies are ugly. Number eight, Eddie Minowick. After Joey temporarily moves out, Eddie moves in with Chandler. At first, Eddie seems fairly normal. Slowly but surely, though, Chandler realizes that he's living with a freak of nature. Okay, good night, you big freak of nature. Eddie begins to show his true colors upon telling Chandler about his latest breakup. And it was literally like she had reached into my chest, <laughs> ripped out my heart, and, and smeared it all over my life, you know? <laughs> he proceeds to accuse Chandler of having sex with his ex and axing his fish. Eddie only becomes more unhinged, adopting a goldfish cracker, watching Chandler sleep, and stealing a mannequin head. When Joey moves back in, Chandler hilariously convinces Eddie that he never lived there in the first place. He's lived here for years. I don't... I don't know what you're talking about, man. Eddie's never seen or heard from again, although we like to think he moved to Vegas, got a job selling dehydrated fruit, and found a girlfriend as crazy as he is. Goodbye, you. Fruit drying psychopath. Number seven, Frank Buffet Jr. Searching for her father, Phoebe instead finds a half brother who looks suspiciously like a guy who accidentally dropped a condom in her guitar case the season before. Hi, uh, did I accidentally drop a condom in your case? You can tell that Frank and Phoebe are cut from the same cloth as both have strange habits and bizarre stories to tell. Um, what kind of things do you like to do at home? <laughs> Melt stuff. Where Phoebe more or less has her life together, though, Frank is a burnout who spends most of his time melting stuff and watching Davy and Goliath. In spite of his immature tendencies, Frank has a taste for much older women, falling for his home economics teacher, Alice. Phoebe eventually comes around to their union and even acts as a surrogate for their triplets, Frank Jr. Jr., Leslie, and Chandler. Chandler's a girl! <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, kindergarten flashback. Number six, Richard Burke. 
If you grew up in the 80s, you probably know Tom Selleck best as Thomas Magnum. For anyone who grew up in the 90s, however, Selleck is best recognized as Richard Burke. With a tall stature and signature mustache, Richard becomes Monica's most serious love interest, excluding Chandler, of course. Since Monica was always the group's maternal figure, it makes sense that she'd fall for a guy who's understanding, responsible, and mature, but still funny in subtle ways. How do you, uh, you know, keep it so neat? I have a little comb. Oh. <laughs> and what do you call that? A mustache comb. Interesting. Although both initially see past the age difference, Richard feels he's too old to have more children, putting an end to their relationship. Even when Richard returns as the other guy in season six, he remains a generally likable person who loves Monica enough to let her go. You go get her, Chandler. And can I give you a piece of advice? If you do get her, don't let her go. Number five, Mike Hannigan. To think, Phoebe met her future husband just because Joey wandered into Central Perk and shouted the name Mike. Mike! <laughs> yeah? <laughs> okay. In many respects, Mike and Phoebe seem like polar opposites on paper. One's very down to earth, while the other sometimes talks as if she's from a different planet. Did you just hit my dad? <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, I've never met a boyfriend's parents before. But, I mean, you have met humans before. They may come from different backgrounds, but Mike's no stick in the mud. He does have an eccentric side, although sometimes he needs a little push from someone like Phoebe to take risks. Phoebe, meanwhile, could use a partner who's more grounded. While Mike loves Phoebe's wonderfully weird ways, he also acts as a voice of reason when she goes too over the top. Do you even know what a banana hammock is? It's a funny word. It's a speedo. <laughs> oh, crap. Both balance each other out perfectly, making Mike a welcome addition to the final seasons. Number four, Jack Geller. Look at those strong hands. Oh, what I wouldn't give to be that can of condensed milk. At one point or another, we're introduced to all the living parents of the six friends. Ross and Monica's parents played the most prominent roles throughout the series, however. Rarely far away from wife Judy, Jack is probably the show's most affectionate father figure. That's not to say he's without fault, as Ross is usually shown more attention than Monica. This is exactly the kind of thing that makes her think you guys love me more than you love her. Oh my God, does she really think that? Nevertheless, Jack knows when he's made a mistake and giving his daughter a Porsche is a nice apology. What about me? Jack and Judy are also among the few couples who have a consistently healthy relationship in every department, as Monica learns firsthand. Out of all the parents, Jack arguably gets the best one-liners, whether he's helping Monica and Chandler get pregnant or telling off Emily's father. I'm not paying for your wine cellar. You thieving would be speaking German if it weren't for us cheap little man. Number three, Ursula Buffet. When friends hit the airwaves, Lisa Kudrow already had a recurring role on Mad About You as waitress Ursula. So it was decided to make them identical twins. Wait, wait, what, what are you doing here? Yeah, um, I was over there, and then you said, excuse me, hello, miss, so now I'm here. Like her sister, Ursula is an oddball who lives in New York, although the similarities end there. Where Phoebe has a strong moral compass, Ursula is beyond cynical, a compulsive liar, and unapologetically self-absorbed, which is why we love her. Why are you lying to him? I don't know. He said he did all this stuff, and then I said I did it too, and he got so excited, it was really fun. Honey? It's a filthy, disgusting habit, and I want you to quit now. She's helped so many people to quit smoking. <laughs> Even when they're in the same shot, you can always tell Ursula apart from Phoebe, which is a testament to Kudrow's acting abilities and how well-defined both characters are. In addition to waitressing, Ursula has also made a name for herself in adult films and will apparently one day be New York's governor. You know, twin stuff is always a real big seller. What? <laughs> Number two, Gunther. Just as George Martin was often described as the fifth Beatle, Gunther was essentially the seventh friend. I'm thinking, no, but thanks. You idiot! He didn't get to regularly sit on the couch and make chit chat with the main cast members, but we could usually count on seeing Gunther working in Central Perk's background. Gunther, six glasses. 
Six? You want me to join you? Oh, I thought Joey was here. Five is good. Not much is known about Gunther's life outside of work, which makes it all the more hysterical when we're given tidbits of obscure trivia, like the fact that he used to be a soap star and lives with Phoebe's co-worker Jasmine. Aside from serving coffee, Gunther's best remembered for his unrequited crush on Rachel, which doesn't have the happiest ending for him. I love you too. Probably not in the same way, <laughs> but I do. Like Charlie Brown, Gunther is a lonely sad sap, but hopefully someday he'll get a win. Now, Gunther may have never gotten a shot with Rachel, but our number one did date a couple of the friends, actually. We know exactly what you're gonna say when you see who it is, but take a look at these honorable mentions first. Hello, Mr. Heckles. You're doing it again. We're not doing anything. You're stomping. It's disturbing my birds. Well, you know, you, ha you have to take a course. <laughs> Otherwise, they don't let you do it. I want both of you out. What? Please please stop. No, you, you stop. Did, oh, I, I don't care. I'm trying to get a person out of my body here, and you're not making it any easier. Well, let me ask you a question. Am I the ultimate fighting champion? Well, no, but... Well, I'm not gonna stop until I'm the ultimate fighting champion. You okay? I'm more than okay. I am really, really happy. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Janice Littman Goralnik. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Oh my God. Those are three words we grew used to hearing with every passing season of Friends. Of course, we never knew exactly when or where we might hear these three words again, making Janice's surprise appearances one of the best running gags. Chandler's obnoxious ex-girlfriend had a way of inserting herself back into the equation at the most inopportune times, be it before a wedding, during childbirth, or at a dream house showing. Chandler used to be my little love muffin. <laughs> a little of Janice can go a long way, so it's probably for the best that she was a recurring character and not a permanent member. Whenever she popped up, however, Janice always left the audience laughing all the way to Yemen. Well, then I guess I'm going to Yemen. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.